Right, here we are in the uh, back cave. So uh, we're going to have a little play with this epoxy and and, uh, and uh, filler and see what happens. Um, so what you need uh, is some brushes. These are like your standard kind of glass fibering brushes. You need loads of cups and, uh, and mixing spatulas. I've, I do loads of stuff with different various plastics and you need to buy paper cups if you're doing it because you go through them like hundreds and if you use plastic ones it costs a fortune. We've got the Blue G epoxy two-part resin there and we've got the Polycraft one. Acetone for cleaning. We've also got some white spirit for cleaning, but really I think we need acetone for this and trusty scales um, for weighing everything out and then the silicon. I don't think you can weigh this out because I mean it, it literally doesn't weigh, weigh anything. So I think you just add it until you're happy. Now what we're going to try and do are two things. First of all, where there is a little bit of wear or missing uh, tape which is only some tiny little spots to be honest with you we're gonna use the filler and we're gonna try and patch that up and the filler will hopefully give it some strength to bond to the rest of the the uh, fiberglass that's there the other thing we can do is where it's uh, I don't know if you can see this let's try and uh, get it closer you can see you can see it's just well that's quite solid actually there but where there's a little there where the epoxy is coming off I've decided to leave that there and all we're going to do is start injecting epoxy down there so that job will have to wait till tomorrow and then you can see there's like little holes in the tape where the epoxy's run out and then the third job we're going to do is here where the varnish has, has kind of rubbed completely off and it's gone right back to the epoxy we may as well fill these with epoxy because it's faster drying and it's harder wearing so it'll be yeah yeah I've, I've online I've, I've been told to do that and you can see these big chunks of varnish that have come out there we'll we'll also epoxy those I think we'll see how it goes you know I bet it will last the season and that's all it's got to do really for now um, and we will see how we get on. So the first thing we're going to do is work out what uh, mix you need. So 100 resin, 29 hardener. So and you mix ratio by weight. So for every 100 of the this we need 29 of the uh, hardener which is this so you can divide that down so 50 would be uh, 14 and a half and then you can divide it again 50 25 mil would be uh, 7.25 so I think we could basically do 25 and 7 because the scales won't do 0.25 it's important to get it pretty you know as close as you can so let's mix that up I, I don't really want to do too much um quantity at the moment because uh, i want to just do some test patches and then we'll, we'll do the rest of the job tomorrow um so the first thing we'll do is this uh so what did i say 125 25 which isn't an awful lot it'll be enough though There's 25. Now I've forgotten my rags. Normally you should clean that before you put the top on, otherwise you can, it can be difficult to get the top back off. So we need another seven. So you can either re-zero the scales or just add it on. It's probably better to re-zero the scales to be frank. Uh, oh, and if you stop a little bit short, it's always awkward, but there we go pours quite nicely this does actually and now we need to mix it up I'm just going to work out how I should have done this before but always check the curing time 2.5 hours so 
this goes, oh, so it's got a, it's got a lot. You can work with this a whole lot of time. Oh, pot time is what I'm looking for. 30 minutes. So you've got 30 minutes to play with this. Sanding time, five hours, full cure, seven days. So it's perfect for what I need, this is. So let's mix it up and you give it a really good mix. And you always scrape the sides. It's actually quite thick working with this one. It's actually quite a thick, it's actually, you can see in there, it's quite thick. It sets amber as well. I think you're starting to see the, the color it probably will set up, which is perfect for overcoating with varnish. You see, varnish isn't structural at all. All the varnish really does is, is makes things look nice protect it from water and it's, to be honest with you it's not even that good at that if in my opinion varnish it's just yeah <laughs> no, I have my opinions on varnish as you can tell I'm not it's not a big opinion so now we're going to move the camera we're going to start off by filling a few of these little gaps I've got more than enough here and don't forget you can sand this down It'll sand quite easily, so. And the other thing I could try today is actually trying to dab using the brush, actually dabbing it through. Hmm, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not sure about that actually. And then, so let's just do, we may as well do as many as we can. And get them as level as we can. What you can't do is epoxy over varnish. I, I think actually there's no reason why you can't epoxy over varnish, as long as you sand it down and you know give it a good grip. It's just that the varnish doesn't really, isn't really a good substrate for the epoxy to f adhere to. It will just pull the varnish. You know the varnish will just pull up. But shh, I think. Now, there's a few uh, YouTubers that I've sort of have, have watched and uh, ranging from professional to real ad hockers. And sorry, I'm going off camera there, aren't I? And um, there are some that just say, you know, if you epoxy over things, you know, you'd be amazed how long it lasts. The, the strive for perfection is extremely costly in terms of time. So, you know, I'm a bit of a perfectionist by nature, um, but I'm also, I'm not very good at, at, at jobs like this. So it's kind of like a bit of a dichotomy for me, really. So we'll just do these um, because I, I, I had to mix quite a bit. I've mixed more than I need of this. And then what I might do, let's just kind of press that in. Try and, uh, you know, do that. See if we can get something in here. I was going to thicken the epoxy, but to be frank, this is quite thick. So I'm not entirely sure it needs it. Oh, boat's falling up. And then what I'll also do, and I'll take this corner down here. Don't know if you can see that. Oh, so, so this corner down here, which I have, I have, I have actually prepared that at the top. I haven't prepared down here. Uh, we just need some acetone on there. just to uh, clean that up, otherwise you just get problems. There we go, that will do. So all I'm gonna do here, and this is why I needed a bit of filler, I thought, because to get the, to get the epoxy in there, I don't think the epoxy might run a little at the thickness I need it, but we're gonna live and learn here. 
again I'm you know I'm being a little bit slapdash because you can sand this down no problem and also I'm not really that bothered uh, and I'm just going to finish this off I'm going to do this until the resin's uh, gone off and then we'll come back and see what's happened with it so I'm quite pleased with how that's gone I actually used pretty much all of all of this the uh, epoxy that was in there and actually I filled it with a little bit of filler and it really thickened it up so you can see where it's I've spread it down all the corners and ridges here where there were little gaps appearing I've also done those little blocks and they look really neat and tidy um, filled down there and those big holes down there and then filled along the tops here the other side isn't so bad this side seems to be worse and then along this seam as well you can actually see with the white where it's quite white and it's thick enough that it will form like a almost like a little ridge like a curved ridge along the back there what i just forgot to do on the back one there was just it just needs a little help to settle it ah yeah it's much stickier now so just just want to just tidy it up just before it it goes off it's really going off now i really love the stuff from from uh, polycraft so it's working really well so we'll we'll get the heaters on and we will hopefully get that to dry and we can come back to it tomorrow morning so it's the morning after yesterday where we did our first uh, epoxying. Um, I've, uh, I couldn't have the heater, the heater's over there. I can't have my heater on all night because electricity prices are just extortionate at the moment. Um, and I switched it off yesterday in the hope that the garage would stay fairly warm. I was, I was mildly worried about three hours in the evening uh three hours after i'd done the epoxying in the evening um it was still quite tacky and according to the uh the bottle here yeah drying time two and a qu quarter hours sanding time five hours so you know i was a bit worried but this morning it seemed a little bit harder still a little bit tacky um but i've had the heater on now for an hour and now this epoxy is actually getting quite hard so the temperature's back up to 16 and a half degrees it was about 10 when i came in under i think it was 9.5 actually so the temperature definitely has an effect on the epoxy um i read a little bit last night and and, and someone told me you can actually get a hair dryer and, and hair dryer it, it to help it uh, cure as well so you know once it's cured it's um it's cured isn't it so i guess we can try that so i've not really inspected it we're doing this live together in fact literally the last hour that has got quite hard and here a little bit a little bit worse um you can see down here these brackets here look really solid uh, they were a little few gaps in them so i've just filled those with the epoxy um on the top here this has been really nice oh that's beautiful i'm really chuffed with that a little bit of sanding needed it was just varnish going a, 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 a you know going adrift there down here i was in the corner here so that looks quite nice and that was moving a little bit but it's not moving now and then let's have a look what we did here where was it yeah it, i think yeah here yeah i think just doing that a little bit has really helped and over the other side you can see looks good uh down this bit and all along here i think we had a little it ran a little bit now what i did actually you'll notice some of this is milky in color and that's because i actually put some of the filler in um and it made the epoxy much more much thicker and it, you could just tell when you were putting it on it had a much better binding ability it, it, you could shape it as you were painting it on especially as it uh, went off a little bit um, and on the front that allowed me to do this so this isn't perfect is it but 
it's actually really really sorted this front part out it just needs a little bit of a a little bit more time to cure um, you can tell it's a little bit grippy not tacky but a little bit grippy and then on the front here yeah this looks great uh, and that was it really, that's all we needed to do, just those little holes on, well not holes, but chunks that have come out of the varnish on the bottom that honestly would have taken oh, like three weeks to have filled those up gradually with varnish. So um, I'm really, really chuffed with this. So far so good, we've done a really good job. Um, the trick now will be, I've just got to wait for my little um these little craft bottles with little needles on them so the idea of that will be to you know get inside these little bits that are moving about i don't know if you can see that but the tapes hmm, you know i mean you can see the tape has basically split there so ideally you'd want to strip this all down and retape it um but I'm gonna see if I can get away with just epoxying it over and under and inside and, and you know if we can get through a season that way all the better. It's literally only the two, this one here and this one here, it's only those two tapes. The rest of the boat is really sound so um, yeah so yeah really looking forward to finishing the epoxying seeing if we can get that all shored up 